Welcome to In Her Voice, a podcast created for women who listen to and live by their deepest wisdom, their inner voice. This was made for you, the woman who feels pulled to more, to lead, to create, to dream, and to be a world changer. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am an inner voice coach. Join me here each week as we explore what it means to reach for your inspired potential, all while honoring your worthiness each and every day. Hello, you guys, this is Kelly, and you are listening to In Her Voice. I'm so excited that you're here today, and I have the amazing Stacey Harris with me today to talk about how to be strategically creative, and I was so jazzed about this conversation because I consider myself to be a creative person. In fact, I consider everyone to be creative, whether or not you agree with me. I really believe we all have the ability to create things. And one of my challenges is sometimes I feel like my creativity is here today and gone tomorrow. You know, that if I, if I, I can only create things when I'm feeling creative and as a creator, as someone who builds things, as someone who makes things, as someone who finds great joy in being creative that can be hard because sometimes you go through periods of time where you're not feeling that flow. And so Stacy is here today to teach us about how to be strategically creative. In other words, how to create literally um, a way to get into that creative flow, even when you're not feeling it. I love, love, love this interview so much. And you know, it's interesting because you may be listening to this and you may think, but I don't think I'm creative, number one, or number two, maybe this is just for entrepreneurs or, or number three, I want to be creative, but I have no idea even what my passion is. I have no idea where to find that flow, where to find that inspiration. And I just want to remind you, I think sometimes people forget that you can figure that out. And the way that you figure that out, the way that you find your passion, the way that you tap into your creativity, the way that you channel your gifts is to listen to your inner voice. So if I'm saying all of this and you're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. I don't even know where to start. Guess what? This is what I help women do. I help women like you figure it out. And honestly, you're the person that's figuring it out. I'm just your guide in that. I just help you listen to your inner voice with my superpower of listening and with my intuitive wisdom. And it's an amazing symbiotic relationship that we build together as coach and client that helps you really to hear what your inner voice is saying, to understand what your gifts are and to understand and begin to create clarity around what your purpose here on earth is. And it is so exciting. So if you would like to talk to me more about doing that, about connecting, about really getting that clarity around your purpose and passion, let's chat. Let's have a discovery call. And I will put a link right in the podcast app that you're listening to, or you can head on over to my website kellycovert.com and click on work with me and set up a discovery call. I have lots of different kinds of coaching packages. My favorite one these days is my inner voice coach in your pocket. It's so fantastic. It's kind of a hybrid version of one-on-one coaching and daily Voxer support. And it is powerful. Let me tell you the clients that I have that are using this right now are making leaps and bounds by listening to their inner voice and having that daily accountability to check in. So head on over to kellycover.com and click on work with me and we can get started on a free discovery call to see if my services are what you need. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit really quick about Stacy. Stacey Harris is a social media strategist and trainer 
working with frustrated entrepreneurs who are tired of spending hours online with no results. Through her podcast, live video, membership community, and consulting, she helps business owners take control of their social and actually see results so they can up their income. And if you are an entrepreneur, you know how great that sounds. And if you're not, I want you to hang on, take a listen, because this is not just about for entrepreneurs today. This is about everyone. This is for everyone who really yearns to tap into their creativity on a regular basis. So let's get right to the interview with Stacey. Hello, Stacey Harris. I'm so excited to have you on In Her Voice today. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And today we're talking about something that I find to be so mind blowing to even think about. I don't even hardly know where to start. And that is how to be strategically creative. Oh my God. So I wanted to start with the most obvious question. What do you think it means to be creative? So for me, creativity is those times when you're sort of effortlessly coming up with ideas. Um, You know, a lot of people talk about it like flow or things like that. But for me, it's whenever I'm in those moments where I'm like, oh, hey, I got this. We can figure this out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Those kind of moments. Um, Because I think it's easy for us to think about creativity in the context of like art and dance and music and those kind of things. But there's so much creativity involved in entrepreneurship and in living our lives and in problem solving. Um, These places where we don't often give ourselves the credit we deserve for being wildly creative. I mean, I know like you're you are like me, you're an entrepreneur, you're a mom. There are some times where creativity is not painting and playing music, (laughs) but in fact, figuring out how the kid is going to be one place and I'm going to be another place all within a window of time that traffic does not allow for. (laughs) Oh, yes. And so those moments of figuring that out, and I'm like, oh, we can do this. That's creativity to me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for honoring the creative soul that every mother has and every woman has who has to figure these things out, who has to come up with ideas and solutions, because I think it's so easy to get stuck into that thinking that, well, like you said, creativity means painting or drawing or writing a poem or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it 100% does not have to mean that. And if we think that, we're already stuck. Mm -hmm. So um, have you always embraced your creativity in that way? Or was that something that you came to? That was something I came to mostly because I spent a lot of my life wishing I was creative. Um, So I have a very, like, strong desire to be artistic. I've always been obsessed with music. Um, but like I went to school to be an audio engineer because that's what you do when you're obsessed with music, but you don't really have very much musical ability. (laughs) Um, like I can tune absolutely any instrument on the planet by ear. If I hear it, I can tune it. Um, however, I cannot carry a tune while singing to save my life. (laughs) Yeah, that could be problematic. Yes. And so for me, it was looking at, like you said, honoring, where am I creative? Where, where, you know, that what we, what we often talk about is problem solving or thinking on your feet, that's creativity. Um, and I think it's easy for us to talk about like as women and as moms, but I think it's, it's really a human thing. I think my husband is the most logical yet creative person on the planet because I've never watched anyone solve a problem like he does. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm Mm -hmm. just like, wait, where did that come from? (laughs) Hmm. I don't even know all the pieces you're talking about, what is happening. Um, And so I think for me, it really came from honoring the part of me that was creative and in my own unique and creative way, uh, because I didn't feel traditionally creative. Mm -hmm. What shifted for you when you embraced your creativity? Um, I think it really came from stepping into this world of entrepreneurship. Uh, even more than, than the idea of, I mean, I started my business when my son was two. And so even more than motherhood, I think genuinely creating something from nothing. And here I am eight years and it's hard to 
to look at that and not be like, oh yeah, that took a lot of creativity, uh, starting a business with a two-year-old and, and creating what I've created. And so honoring that and honoring what I needed to be able to step into that space, um, really allowed me to appreciate the things I was doing instead of wishing for something else. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love just thinking about appreciating the things that we're doing. I think we don't do that enough. I'm terrible about it. Like I will sit here and be like, yeah, it allowed me to do that. But it's, it's something I have to be very conscious of Mm -hmm. because it is not my default setting. So I don't think it's anyone's default setting. No, I, it's certainly not mine. Do you have any practices around that that you do on a daily or weekly basis? Uh, so it started out really sort of where I think all mindset work starts at, which is like someone somewhere along the way told me to start a gratitude list. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I started with that and that's something, and not to keep talking, like, it's funny, I'd never talk about being a mom this much, but that's something we do with my son, um, because I want him to have that muscle very young. Uh, and I think that really basic tool being in my toolbox has allowed me to create the space where I feel comfortable honoring those parts of me and appreciating those parts of me that don't make sense because a gratitude list is super easy for like the first week. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, I have run out of things to be grateful for. <laughs> we can only be grateful for coffee so many days in a row. Right. Right. Um, or a delicious breakfast or that it's sunny outside. Um, and so <laughs> as I was sort of forced myself to dig deeper, that's where I got that like, Oh, I'm grateful that I, I can always find a solution, and that's it's a skill I've I've had my whole life. I will always find a way, mm-hmm. and that's not something that necessarily everybody has and or appreciates about themselves. Uh, and so for me, that practice, as as simple as it seems, is a thing that still, as I've added more mindfulness and and you know things like journaling and meditation and those kind of pieces it still comes back to that being the most important tool in my toolbox. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder um, if you had a moment when you sort of had like this aha, like, oh yeah, I am a creative person. And like that, did you feel that aliveness in your soul? Like, did you feel your inner voice say, finally? Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean, but I didn't at all yeah. have that. For me, it's it, it's a slow burn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that um, creeps up uh, from time to time. And and what's interesting is it allowed me to do things that are more traditionally creative. You know, since I have acknowledged that untraditional creativity in myself, it allowed me to do things like start to paint and draw and um, take photographs and those sort of more traditional creative things. And so I think that was probably the closest I've had to like a light switch kind of like, oh, wait, kind of thing, because Mm -hmm. I realized that my creativity was not necessarily reliant on skill. I could enjoy just the exercise of doing it, Mm -hmm. um, which is not something that is (laughs) natural to me. I tend to be somebody who's like, if I'm not awesome at it the first try, I'm never doing it again. Oh, let me raise my hand and say, Uh yes, uh, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. A lot of us are that way. Um, no, it's, it's uncomfortable being terrible at something like the learn, I I call it the messy middle, like that moment between like deciding and like becoming an expert at something or like mastery is long (laughs) and it takes a lot of really terrible work. Um, and so I, I don't think for me, there was like one moment where I was like, oh yeah, I think it was a series of like little tiny steps Mm -hmm. and I think acknowledging that it's probably going to be more like that in most cases than it is like and now I just know this is probably a gift we really need to give ourselves yeah it's it's like patience it's like having that understanding the same thing when you have like a little baby who's learning how to walk you don't expect them to just like get up and do it and yeah. yet we are that way with ourselves. So like giving ourselves that grace that we give our children and babies and like people who are learning something for the first time, I think is so beautiful. So I am definitely a creative person. And like you, I haven't always thought of myself as being that way because I'm a terrible painter, drawer, artist. I just always, that's how I associated that. So much like you, even though I'm a musician 
And, um, I, but I just thought, well, I'm not composing music. I'm not writing music. So I'm not actually creating something out of nothing. So when I really started to embrace my creative spirit, something that, and I would, I'll admit this still comes up for me. It gets in the way is I feel like my creativity ebbs and flows. Like you said, like I have moments when I am like in the zone and I have all of this creative energy and all of these ideas and that will be, you know, maybe a week. And then for like the other three weeks of the month, not so much. And I feel like for whatever reason, it's because I have a lot on my plate or because, you know, I have an emergent life emergency or because my kids have a lot of running around to do or whatever. I feel like I don't have it anymore. And I think that's what so intrigued me about this concept of being strategically creative. So what exactly do you mean by that? So this was really born out of uh, my obsession and really my work with social media marketing. It is so often that I would have conversations with clients where they would talk about like, oh, well, I just jump into Instagram stories or Facebook or whatever, my marketing essentially, when I'm feeling called to do so, when I'm feeling creative and I have something to say. And what happened is the longer it took you between those instances, the harder it was to show up. And so for me, it's about creating a foundation of stuff that is going to happen or creating a structure for me to sort of play in that allows me to actually semi-reliably become creative and share things worth sharing. And so it was really born out of like, a pretty tactical necessity of like content needs to be consistent. This stuff needs to go out regularly because that's what, you know, generates revenue, which pays my bills. <laughs> right. So it comes out of a very sort of tactical, logical place, but by creating those spaces for myself so that on days where I wasn't feeling creative, I could lean back on past creativity and just use that allowed me to be creative more often because I removed the pressure to think of something clever. Because almost no one is clever and creative on demand. I am not. That is for sure. No, the more pressure you apply to like, I need to be creative right now. I, I need to really show up in a great way. The harder it is to do that. And then what happens again is that break, that that time away, especially in our marketing. And, and that's where we see people who are showing up with emails. I know I haven't emailed you in a really long time. It's generally because they were waiting for something to inspire them. And they waited and they waited. And then they felt embarrassed that they hadn't said anything in a while. And so they kept waiting. And then it gets really, really hard to start over again. And you end up in a cycle of having to keep starting over. And starting is the hardest part. Mm-hmm. Starting mm -hmm. tends to be the least creative part. And so it apply, you know, it was born out of very simply building marketing plans, but it's something that has applied to my life in lots of ways. Um, you know, as I decided to step into my more traditionally creative side and like, I always really wanted to be one, like a really great artist and something, somebody who was really good at drawing. So I started taking classes, like I started actually learning to technically draw and creating that, that box of technicality allows me to feel like I can get creative and play with where the edges of that box are. But I had to strategically build the box of this is, this is the space I play in so that I could start creatively testing those limits. Mm -hmm. And so again, mm -hmm. it was born out of very logical places, but it has applied to a lot of different parts of my life and my creativity. Yeah. Okay. So, so many things coming up for me personally, and I think there are probably people listening who can identify with this. I, um, hear, <laughs> I hear the word like systems or, uh, plan and I like get freaked out mm -hmm. because I feel like I don't want to be tied down to mm -hmm. that like I am like free spirit and I want to be able to like be spontaneous and move in and out of you know what I'm feeling my heart wants me to say mm -hmm. and so how do I how do I um make those 
pieces, the part of me that wants to be consistent and be strategically creative, because there is a part of me that thinks, wow, that would be really great. How do I sort of convince them to, to work together? For, and so first of all, you're not, you're definitely not alone. I would say like for every five clients I talk to, four of them feel this way. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Thank you. <laughs> you are not alone. Um, as, as, uh, I can't remember who said it, but like, you're not special. You're not alone. Like everyone feels this way. And I, I feel so much like the journey of our lives is something we all feel like we're having these unique problems. And it's like, no, no, everyone also thinks this is a terrible idea, but it's what we do. Um, and so for me, it was about, cause I'm the same way. Like, let me also say, I am absolutely somebody who loves systems now, but the rebel part of my brain, which is large, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, forget that. I'm cool. I don't need your rules. Like, so for me, it was really about realizing that the plan and the structure and the system was not to contain me, but to support me. Mm. And so the plan and the structure and the system is here for me uh, instead of like it's here to control me or to dictate what I do. And I tell every client when we build a strategy for them, this thing is written in pencil. Like there's nothing that, that can't be changed. My editorial calendar is like a living, breathing document. I have the calendar for the whole, I have titles for podcasts for the rest of the year already done. However, throughout the year, I will absolutely change that. I've already, I mean, it's February and I've already had instances where I was like, Actually, no, we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> we're going to talk about this because something came up, especially in the space I sit in. Things change. Things happen. Um, or I'll be having a conversation with somebody and I'll be like, oh, my gosh, I need to tell more than one person this. This is going to be what I talk about on, on the show next week. And so I pre-record content. I batch content. I, I plan content. But if for Tuesday's episode, I decide today on Thursday that it needs to be something different, I can go in, record that, and swap it in. Mm -hmm. But I can do that because I have a structure so that if I don't feel that way, something's going out on Tuesday anyways. Because mm -hmm. when I was creative, because when I was really feeling my mojo, I batched that content and I maximized that energy. Mm -hmm. So let's and talk can, about, okay. sorry, I was going to say, let's talk about that piece of mm -hmm. it. You keep using the word play, mm -hmm. which I love because that is not something that I think I'm great at. Like, I don't think I'm great at playing. Mm -hmm. And so like I, you said, you have, I wrote, I wrote it down. You create a foundation, a foundation of stuff that you play in, that you can play in. So mm -hmm. literally what I'm picturing in my mind is like playground. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what that creation, like what that looks like. Like, how do you create the playground, if you will? Because I feel like so many of us are like, I'm creative. I have to do something and put it out right now. And instead, we're not taking that, that creative time and flow and building the playground that we can revisit all of the time. So for me, the playground would actually be the strategy. Who am I talking to? What do I need to say? What has to happen? Because when you create those parameters, when you create those boundaries, that's where you can then go and like turn the monkey bars into a fort. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just to go full on with the playground analogy. When you have those pieces, then you have the freedom to change them. It's hard to do that from a place of I'm building a, now I'm building a fort and I have, I have nothing here to build the fort off of. Then we just have blankets on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so for me, building out that initial structure of here's what I'm saying, here's who I'm talking to, here's what I have to tell them, allows me to then come in and say, ooh, you know what? I actually want to take this perspective. It also, the energy of wanting to create something and put it out right now stops the energy of creating because we go into creating and then we flip off the switch to disperse that, that thing we created. Instead of, for me, because I have built this structure and I know, because I have podcast titles for the rest of the year, I can keep creating. So I just go from one to the next to the next to the next. So I stay in that creative energy. I stay in that space of, 
of birthing content much longer because I don't immediately switch into, okay, now I have to tell people about this. Mm -hmm. So I can stay creative and then I can shift into distribution, which is a much more tactical part of our brain than creating is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally see that. It's almost like the the tactical part, the distribution, like the actual putting the stuff out there is so sort of logical that mm -hmm. it shuts down the creativity. Right. So now you've created one thing while you were in that creative space instead of where what I'm doing is creating six episodes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. So um, when you are, do you, hmm, this is a really interesting question, right? I'm, I'm assuming that you don't necessarily plan your creativity time. So like, how do you, how do you, if you're just starting out with this kind of system do you just sort of wait until you're feeling creative and then be like okay i'm not doing anything else right now except digging into making my playground i make space for it um for me at this point i've hacked myself to the point where i know kind of when i'm going to be creative mm -hmm. I kind of know when i am most in alignment with that energy um, for example, before we hopped on, we talked about me being an early bird. I tend to be most creative early in my day. I really like working when no one else is working because it makes me feel like I'm like, I don't know, rebelling against the system and like, this is my space and I can do whatever I want in it because no one else is here, which is silly because I'm literally in an office by myself. It's not like anyone would notice if I did anything in the middle of the day, but there is an energy to the early morning and to the late at night where it really fuels my creativity. I know that about myself. And so when I am in a batching period and I'm really creating a ton of content or creating a ton of whatever, I tend to do that really early in the day and or on the weekends. Because I know for me, part of that like, I'm here when no one else is kind of energy allows me to feel super creative. Mm -hmm. So take stock, notice kind of where are you feeling the most creative? Where does that tend to creep up for you? And then maximize that time, optimize the amount of time you can spend in it. I built the playground when I wasn't necessarily feeling super creative. Partially because at this point I know the system, like I, I know what the playground needs. I know we need to build monkey bars here and we need a swing set here and we're going to put a couple of slides over here. Like I know what those components are. I don't have to be creative to put those together. And that's true for most of us. We all know we have, you know, X, Y, Z that needs to go out and this promotion that we're launching and these pieces of content that we do. For the most part, we already know that stuff. So I mapped that out when I wasn't feeling creative. So in that space, I've opened up for creativity, for actual creation and really execution of the plan. I can then just look at what I created and go, oh yeah, I can talk about that. Here's the perspective I wanna take on that. And I can then flip into that creative space because I have this sort of thing to lean on. I have this playground to start from. I can, again, I can look at the monkey bars and say, cool, this would be an awesome fort. Mm -hmm. Because all I did when I created the plan or built the playground was create the structures for me to then do something with. Instead mm -hmm. of having to go, all right, so I'm launching XYZ program. I need to make sure this content goes out to support that. All right, I'm gonna sit down and create that right now. Mm. Now I'm flipping hard from logical to creative again, and then flipping right back to logical for distribution because I've decided I need to put it out right now because I didn't plan in advance of when these things needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it really is just optimized for me. I'm not a great switcher. I am not somebody who like really loves jumping from task to task. I am absolutely a recovering multitasker because I just, I don't tend to operate that operate well that way. And so for me, anytime I can stay in a space of the same thing all day, this is why all my client calls happen on one day. This is why all my learning stuff happens on one day. All my client delivery work happens on one day. All my content creation stuff happens on one day. Because if I can just sit in that and like <laughs> pedal to the metal for as long as that kind of energy will last, stay with it, I'm, we I'm way better served. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a few of the things that I just wanna like um, highlight that came up for me as you were talking is, is this idea of like really starting to become aware of 
what kind of energy you have throughout the day when your creativity shows up because it's probably on a pretty regular schedule Mm -hmm. and understanding how you can sort of get into that place in a quicker way and then stay in that place as long as you need to stay in it. And this is just about observing. It's just about being mindful of when that stuff comes up. And and that may be as easy as like um, my, uh, my listeners know I have a practice tracker that I use throughout the month and I sort of have a daily page. And so like I could just make a little note on my practice tracker for that day. I was really creative today and this is what time I started or whatever. And if you're not aware of those things yet, you can start to become aware just by taking note. So I really love that. And then the other thing that that came up to me is is that is this, that the playground doesn't require creativity to build. And I think that for me personally is key. Like I just need to like set aside a day and, you know, give myself some fun snacks and <laughs> and just do that work. And once that work is done, then it's there. It's always there and it's ready to go anytime that I feel in that flow. And so I love that. I love that sort of you're setting yourself up to to be ready to be creative. Absolutely. And you know what? You make a good point with like fun snacks. Like this is one of the reasons. So this is exactly the work we do at my live events. So with Backstage Live is we come out, we we pull someone out of their office and they come see me and we work on this stuff together. We build the playground together because there's something really powerful about getting out of your office to do this, getting out of your normal space. You know, if you're somebody who normally works from the couch or works from your home office or works from a, a fixed office, go to a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. go you know outside go remove yourself from your regular environment to reward yourself for doing the stuff that is gonna feel pretty like tactical and uncreative and is going especially if you're coming from a place of like I don't want to plan I don't want to structure I will not be confined it's like great go outside and map this out yeah because yeah. you're not going to feel confined sitting outside. Of course, 100%. this is easy for me to say because I live in Southern California. But for those of you who do not live in Southern California, find some place to do this in the spring. <laughs> or or in June when it there actually gets warm. Um, no, I don't know. You, it's always warm here. You see, you made me laugh when you said you put um, – you, you're grateful for the sunshine because, like, that's a real thing that doesn't happen very often in Syracuse <laughs> in the winter. I'm like, oh, I don't get to write that every day. <laughs> yeah, no, we, I write that most days. Well, yeah. especially this winter, we've had a ton of rain. And so for the first couple of rains, I was really grateful for the rain because we, we're, you know, we, we tend towards the drought. At this point, I am grateful for sunshine again, because it just keeps raining. <laughs> yeah, that's hysterical. So, you know, I want to just switch this on its head just a little bit, because I know that there are some women who listen to this podcast who aren't necessarily entrepreneurs. Although I think that deep in your souls, I'm um, you hear me talking to you guys, right? That you are and that that's going to come out in you one day. But for those of um, us who aren't quite there yet, for my listeners who aren't quite there yet, how can we use this idea in our regular lives? Like not necessarily in our business lives, but in our regular lives. So um, I don't know how much of your audience is, but it's like parents, but this is something I do within like raising my kid too. You know, we have the structure of like, this is bedtime and this happens, but we also have the structure of like, I, again, I live in Southern California. I live about 15 minutes from Disneyland. We have annual passes once per week. We go after school and we spend the afternoon at Disneyland because it allows us to really shut out the world for a couple of hours and just sit and play and just Mm -hmm. sit in like fun. We talk about it as we live in a place where other people vacation. So we add a little vacation to our week every week. And when it's warm enough, we go to the beach instead of Disney. Like we, we create that space to just be silly in the week And so it's the same thing. We've created a structure of like, okay, well, if we're going to do that on Wednesdays, because Wednesdays happen to be early out, these are the things that happen to have to happen on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday to support that desire. You know, finding the ways that you can create a, you know, build your playground so that you have the space when you're feeling called to, to be a little more creative. 
Mm-hmm. Now, some weeks that Wednesday gets moved to Tuesday because there's something going on on Tuesday or, there, we, you know, things need to get moved around. We can do that, though, because we have the overarching, like, this is what needs to happen to support us being able to do that. Right, right. You know, another area that um, I think works really well, this this idea works really well, is with meal planning. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, if you have kind of a structure of, of what you're going to be having through the week, you don't have to think as hard about that it's not like you're you're recreating the wheel every single week you just sort of like work inside of that and if you have a routine around that like when you go to the grocery store and when you're going to sit down and figure out what you're going to have for the week and how you plan everything out then there's still room to be creative when that hits you within that structure and so that's another way i think that a lot of people can really use this idea to make their lives easier truly And I think the meal planning is such a great example because this is something I struggled with for such a long time because inevitably the thing we plan to have for dinner Monday night is the thing that sounds terrible for dinner Monday Mm -hmm. night. And so now we just have like seven dinners like on the board and that's what we got the groceries for. And it's kind of like, which one do you want to have tonight? So we have sort of front ended decision fatigue because we're only talking about a few options versus all of the food in the world. (laughs) Which yeah. generally just ends up with like tacos from this great taco place by our house. Like that's that's, <laughs> that's sort of the default if nothing else works. Um, so it again, you're creating that structure where you can be like, oh well, this could work, and or like, oh well, these ingredients will also turn into this. How about we have it? Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, um, Stacey, this this is. I feel like there are so many takeaways. I feel like I just want to like go away for a day. <laughs> and build my playground and bring fun snacks and um, have some great music. Maybe I would even go uh, somewhere where it's warm. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think sometimes people get stuck in this in this place of like, well, I don't have have the time to do that. See, the thing is, is if we make the time now, we are rewarded on the back end with so much more time and so much more flexibility and just so much more joy in our lives instead of feeling like angsty and stressed out and pressured to um, figure out every single day what that day is going to look like and what we're going to be doing that day. And I just love this so much. I, you're absolutely right. And the meal planning is such a good representation of that. Like doing that for us, doing that, we do ours on Tuesday night, like figuring that out Tuesday night means we save like two hours every day of not having the what's for dinner talk. Yes. Where we're just talking around and around and then we end up at the taco place. Like, <laughs> which you can only do that so many times before, before it's just embarrassing. Well, and then you get taco fatigue and nobody wants that. No, taco fatigue is not a thing in my house. <laughs> <laughs> There is no such thing as taco fatigue in my house. Um, uh, but but yeah, you're like, I really would like to eat something else. Like I, <laughs> So for me, again, upfronting that is what, what gives me the time to do other things. Just like figuring out my marketing, figuring out my, my schedule. You know, every Friday at the end of my day, I map out what my next week is. Not because my days are actually going to go like that for the next week, but because when I get to work on Monday then, I start working. I yes. don't look at what Monday is. Yeah. I, this is so funny that you bring that up because something that I've really been working on personally this month is having an evening routine. And mm-hmm. in my evening routine, I make the list of the things that I want to accomplish the next day because that's always in my head. Um, but I don't want to spend time in the morning the next day when like that's when my creativity flows too, thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I just want it done. And so that's been super helpful to me. That's been a practice that I've been tracking this, this month to, to get better at it. Um, because it It doesn't, it doesn't come to mind always unless I'm paying attention. And for me, it allows me to shut down my brain at the end of the day much more easily. Yes. Because I don't have that to-do list running through my head because I'm afraid I'm going to forget something. Yeah. If -hmm. I can get it out of my head and put it down and be like, okay, now tomorrow owns that and I can just go to sleep. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for me, as someone who who doesn't particularly love systems or that's not true, I actually do love them. I just don't love the idea of them. 
um, I'm learning to use them to free, to find freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I have the system of, of sitting down every night to make my list for the next day, that gives me freedom for the rest of the night. And it gives me freedom in the next morning. And so it doesn't feel as hard to me. Well, and you know, one thing I want to kind of leave everybody with, if, they're, if there's somebody who doesn't like systems is here's the deal, whether you like them or not, they're, you're currently using them and they exist in your life. And you probably really love them and how they exist in your life. If you would just acknowledge that there are some already in your life. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're there. Because, yeah. When you go, oh, hey, no. You know, if we're listening to this conversation, you're like, oh, yeah, I absolutely meal plan every week. And we do exactly that. And it's great. Great. You have a system already. Mm -hmm. Like just apply that same thing to something else. Um, because I do find that my friends and clients who hate systems all meal plan. Isn't and I'm like, funny? you know, that's a system. <laughs> <laughs> like you're already using this. <laughs> yeah. You're not special. Yeah. Um, and again, some of that language around, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with language and how we language things. And so when we decide that we don't like systems we don't like systems. And every time we think about systems, we're going to feel that I don't like systems mm -hmm. versus systems are here to support me, not control me. And so then when we see a system, we're like, oh, I can use this. Like yeah. the systems are there for you to use. Mm -hmm. So change your language and, and your, that will impact your perspective. Mm. So much goodness. So much goodness. Stacey, I can't believe how fast this time flew by. Um, why don't you let my listeners know about all of your amazing stuff? You've talked about your podcast a little bit. How can we connect with you? So absolutely everything for the podcast um, is over at thestacyharris.com. Um, if you want to spend a day in sunny Southern California yes, please. Uh, doing some planning, <laughs> I do have a Backstage Live um, event coming up in March, and then we're doing another one in uh, May. Uh, both here in Southern California, where it will be sunny and warm and delightful. Uh, and so that's a great way to start building the structure with the support of other people who probably also don't like doing this. And I'm there and we make it fun and we have snacks and we get a yummy lunch and it's a good mm -hmm. day. Fun snacks. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> gotta have fun snacks. But absolutely, the details for absolutely everything are over at thestaceyharris.com. Mm -hmm. And that's also how we can connect with you on Instagram as yep. well. And Stacey I'm has the Stacey excellent. Harris everywhere 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 so um so the stacy harris um <laughs> why don't you tell us what your inner voice is asking of you right now in your life to rest <laughs> yes. so i um i launched a digital marketing agency named uncommonly more earlier this year and in launching a second business, I'm remembering all the things. It's kind of like when you have, although I only have one child, but I've been told when you have a second child, you forget how hard your first child was. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing the same is true with businesses. <laughs> when you launch a second business, you have somehow blocked out all the effort it took to launch that from the paperwork and the monotonous stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so right now, my, my inner voice, my inner knowing is a lot about rest, which is why I'm heading into a three-day weekend that I'm very much so looking forward to. Oh, well, I'm glad that you're listening. And I'm sure that that's a message that many of us should hold on to and uh, make sure that if our inner voice is sharing that, we listen as well. Stacy, thank you so much. I have so enjoyed having you on. I love your energy. I love your excitement around systems. It makes me super happy and excited to have my own. So thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. I, I hope that I get lots of DMs on Instagram from you guys telling me that you have built some kind of structure to support you getting to like have a little fun and be creative. Yes. Can't wait. Oh my goodness. I just love that idea of being cre um, strategically creative. If you, if you can't tell you guys, it is early this morning. My voice and maybe my brain still aren't all the way on yet, but I wanted to make sure that I got this out to you. And I am doing Stacy's workshop virtually today, her backstage live work workshop today. And if this is something that's really just resonating with you, like, I have a business. I really need this. This is something that I need to understand how to work it. And that's, that it, that's exactly how it was for me. Um, I encourage you to check out her website because she has a couple more, 
of her Backstage Live workshops this year. And I think that two of them are virtual, so you can do them right from home, like no bra required. How about that? And I think one of them is live. I know there's one coming up in June. So definitely check that out. I will report back over on Instagram at Kelly J. Covert in my stories and let you know how um, I loved it. And I'm betting that if you follow me on Instagram, you might see some changes there because I'm really going to implement on my social media, the things that I learned today. So I'm excited about that. Just a reminder, if you aren't an entrepreneur, if you don't have a business, this podcast is still for you. This is about listening to your inner voice. And if you're not sure what that means, or if you're not sure how to do it, or if you just need some extra support in that, I just encourage you to reach out to me. Let's connect. Let's talk. Let's see if inner voice coaching is right for you. And let's see if that can really get you to where you want to be, to how you want to be feeling every single day. Click the link in the podcast app that you're listening to, and we can set up a free discovery call and talk. I want to remind you, you matter. You were put on this earth for a reason. I believe that with all of my heart. You do have a purpose. You do have a passion. And we need you showing up in all of that. You are worthy. 